Hi, this is Matt from the MRP Tech Podcast, and this is a review on Arch Linux. This is a video that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and I thought if you're listening to this on the RSS feed for my podcast, you may want to uh, check out my YouTube channel and see the video review. Um, I'll try to gear it towards both audio and video. Uh, but first thing I'm going to get into is talk about why I'm doing this review. I've been using Arch Linux for over a year, and I believe that when you do reviews, you shouldn't just uh, review something after you start using it. Uh, what I want to do is start reviewing products that I've been using for a long time and that I still love after using it for a long time. So let's talk about Arch Linux. And Arch Linux is, um, there's a little bit of myth and a long history about Arch Linux and about people who use Arch Linux. Uh, but let me talk to you a little bit about what it is first. Okay, so um, the default installation of Arch Linux is very minimal. It's a very base system. And you configure it by the user. The user configures it. And you install exactly what you want for a system. So you can have as much or as little installed on your system as you want. So for instance, when you purchase a new computer, you often get a lot of software included on that computer that you may not necessarily want after a period of time. And sometimes you can't delete that software. With Arch Linux, you can put whatever you want on the system and you make the system yourself. So uh, basically uh, Arch is advertised as being simple to use. Uh, and their definition of simple means uh, that they don't add anything um, unnecessary or make any modifications to the system that the user doesn't want. So everything is controlled by the user, which I find uh, fascinating. I really enjoy the fact that this is a system that I built and um, it's it's unique to my use case and what I want to do. So Arch is also very modern. Um, it is constantly updated. Arch is a, a Linux distribution that's considered a rolling release. And what a rolling release is, if you've ever used Linux before, some Linux distributions come every six months with a new release and you have to either upgrade or in install a fresh install of that new release well with arch linux you are constantly getting updates and you are uh, on that rolling release so there's no need to reinstall your system after a period of time you can keep a system running forever uh, so arch has been around since uh, early 2001 First version came out in 2002. Um, it's been maintained by a few different people now and has a vast community of supporters who uh, contribute to the project. So um, let me tell you a little bit of history about myself first. In 2009, I started using uh, Ubuntu. Basically, the idea here is I knew absolutely nothing about Linux. And this is something I came across by myself. No one showed me how to do it. No one showed me how to install it. And I sort of learned on my own. And after learning a little bit about Ubuntu, I wanted to learn more about Linux. And I wanted to learn how I could incorporate uh, Linux into my life. And so after a few years, I found myself sort of limited with Ubuntu. And basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to learn more about Linux. I wanted to know more about how Linux worked. And I wanted to get deep down into uh, what exactly was I, what system was I using? How do I learn more about it? And I didn't really have any um, ideas on how to do that. So I started testing Linux distributions. And if you go to distrowatch.com, there's a list of the top 100 uh, Linux distributions being searched for right now. And so I tested a bunch of them out for a, peri a long period of time. And there are lots of Linux distributions that are based off Ubuntu. Uh, there are forks of different projects that uh, are based off of each other. There are completely uh, made from scratch Linux distributions that I tried out. And over time, I figured out which ones worked for me, which ones didn't work for me. And um, eventually, I started hearing something about Arch Linux. Now, uh, what I was nervous about with Arch Linux is the install process because it is not as easy as putting in the disk and in clicking install. You do the install yourself. So I didn't really know a whole lot about Arch Linux. Uh, so I found um, a couple of projects 
that are based off of Arch Linux but are easier to install. So the first thing that I want to talk about is Manjaro. And this is a an easy to install um, Linux operating system based off of Arch Linux. Basically, it's Arch Linux without the hard install. And there are a few differences here and there between Arch Linux and Manjaro. But for the most part, you get to use the Arch system and sort of learn it without having to go through the entire process. Now, the Arch process is sort of a, a challenge, and you hear the term the Arch challenge. So after a while, after I learned how to use the system a little bit, I decided more and more that I really wanted to take the Arch Linux challenge. And because it's sort of a rite of passage or a, um, a way to earn some geek cred uh, by getting an install to work. And of course, the first few times that I tried to install this, I wasn't really sure what to do. Uh, so I, uh, my, my install failed and I didn't really know how to, what exactly I was doing wrong. Um, one of the great things about Arch Linux is the Arch Wiki. There is so much information on their website, so much documentation, it's unbelievable. So when you go to the Arch Wiki, there is frequently asked questions. There's a beginner's guide. Uh, anything that you need to know about installing Arch Linux, I would start with the beginner's guide. There's an installation guide. And when you click on those, basically it's going to give you all the information that you need to set up your system. If you can follow directions, you can install Arch Linux. So after installing Arch Linux, um, the process itself took several hours because I wanted to make sure I was typing in everything correctly. I was moving slowly, making sure I wasn't making any mistakes. You need to learn how to partition your hard drive manually. You need to um, understand some of the terminology that's involved. There's a lot to it. And if you're wanting to learn more about computers and you're wanting to learn how things work, this is a great way to do it. You can start to understand what a lot of the commands in the command line mean, and you can start to understand how to build this system from its base, which when you start installing Arch Linux, you basically have a command prompt. You don't have a user interface, and you install the packages that you need um, from, from the Arch uh, repositories, and you basically build the system yourself. So the documentation is a great help. The installation guide, the beginner's guide, those are what's going to get you started. Um, I also recommend you could watch some videos on the installation itself on YouTube. There are tons of um, guides out there to get you to install the system that you want. So we're not going to get into that today. I'm going to talk about my install here today. And I'm going to talk a little bit about performance. So this is on a System76 computer, and this is one of my primary machines. Um, this machine I use for just about everyday use. It has been running with Arch Linux for over a year now. Now, there are some mis misconceptions about Arch Linux, and one of those being that Arch is unstable, the reason why a lot of people think Arch is unstable is because you're constantly getting new software every single day. And some of it is bleeding edge software meant for developers or testing. And those um, can be those packages can be unstable, but if you choose not to get the very bleeding edge, you're gonna get a rock solid system. So what I have is I have installed Arch Linux and I have installed it with the GNOME desktop environment. And the GNOME desktop environment is one of very many that you can use with Linux and happens to be one of my favorites and I'm not going to get into why that is. I'm just gonna show you a little bit around. So way up here at the top corner, um, you have some drop down menus. You have your internet connection, so like screen brightness, microphone volume, and all of those different things that you would use quite frequently. How to turn your computer on and off. You can access your settings from a very easy one click um, from there. Um, and you also have a calendar with uh, a notifications menu right in the middle. I really like that right where it is, right in the middle. Very easy to access from there. Now, over here in the upper left, I've got an activities menu. And this is where you're going to find most of the functionality of Linux. Um, and if you were installing software, you wanted to uh, use your software, 
or use multiple desktops, you can use this activities menu to pull up anything that you need very fast. Okay, so I'm going to click the show applications button down here, and this shows everything that I have installed on my computer. All the different software I use every single day, um, and some of those uh, are audio recording software like Ardour and Audacity. I've got CD burning software uh, called Brazero, um, calculators, calendars, um, various web browsers, Chromium web browser, Firefox, Chrome OS, not Chrome OS, Chrome browser, and a lot of this uh, software is is free. Um, and any actually everything that I use on this computer is absolutely free and legal to use and so this software is is basically built and installed because I chose to put it there I've got a few games installed um, I also have the system 76 drivers because um, system 76 normally comes with Ubuntu installed on it uh, all the system 76 computers and but because arch is um, based off of Linux you can get access to all Linux software. So someone has packaged the System76 drivers for Arch Linux, and I have that as well. So there's there's tons and tons of software that I have used. Some of it I've talked about in previous videos. Others I have not yet, and I will get to uh, in another video. So basically, um, you have all of your frequently used applications. You can choose what you put over here on the the dock over here on the, the left side. Um, and you have all access to all of your software just by scrolling up and down uh, or clicking on some of these little buttons over on the right hand side. You also have frequently used software um, that you can click on. All the recent, most recent software that you've used shows up there as well. So what's great about the software that you install, um, it's really easy to get the latest and greatest software. So for instance, anytime that something new comes out from LibreOffice, I can get the, the latest and greatest within a matter of hours or days. So I also have something um, I'm here installed called Quake, and this is a drop down terminal. So what this does, um, I can access uh, the command line very easily. And basically, um, if I wanted to run upgrades for all of my software, a system-wide upgrade, it's going to tell me using all of these packages up here what has what is available, what is uh, available for updates. If you look, you can see Chromium, um, you can see Core Utils, you can see a lot of different packages that are are needing upgrading. Now I did a full system upgrade before I started this video, and the total download. Uh, size was over a gig. Um, total download size was actually 277 megabytes. Uh, installed size was over a gig and the upgrade size was 13 megabytes once everything was all installed. And then I uh, it says, do I want to proceed with installation? I click yes. And this is all done through the uh, package manager called Pac-Man. And basically it goes through and installs all the latest and greatest software. It usually takes a few minutes to do and it will run through and make sure everything is upgraded Created, and then properly uh, installed after that and um, basically from that point on you have a modern up-to-date system all the security updates are done through Pac-Man and you're you are completely up-to-date so that's one of my favorite things about Arch Linux is being able to um, upgrade whenever you whenever you want to upgrade and getting the latest and greatest software. Nobody forces upgrades on uh, your system. It's all completely up to you. So I do that by typing in the following command, sudo uh, pacman-syu. So sudo gives me administrator privileges. Pacman is the package manager, and this tells me to do a full system upgrade. So then I type in my super secret password and it will go and it will search for the latest and greatest pack packages. So my system is fully up to date because I did it just before the beginning of this video. So um, as far as using Arch Linux, I prefer Arch Linux with the GNOME desktop environment, which is what you're seeing here. Um, I've shown you 
some of the features of the Arch Linux uh, package manager. And if you can't find software from the package manager, uh, what's great about Arch Linux is the Arch user repository, which is a, a repository of packages that are built by other Arch Linux users in case the the pack package manager uh, doesn't have it available. So you can actually build your own software and you can post it to the Arch user repository and you will grant access for anyone to use, which is awesome. So with this whole install process, everybody tends to be nervous about, I would say if you have been using Linux for a little while and you're looking for something new and you're looking to install something different and you want to try to challenge yourself a little bit, I would say uh, Arch Linux is the way to go. Here's why. By doing things manually, you tend to learn more than just following uh, a basic install without understanding exactly what is happening. So as I installed all of these um, packages from, from the base install of Arch, I realize exactly how things work a little bit better than I did just by clicking install or clicking an upgrade or something along those lines. I was able to learn as I went and was did it happen perfectly the first time? No, but I kept trying and eventually I built a system that has worked better than any other system that I have used in my entire life. And that goes to say a lot because this system has been running flawlessly for over a year on the same computer. Before that, I'd actually used Arch Linux on a couple of different computers um, that I previously owned and no longer own. And uh, so I, there was a learning process to this. And now I built a system and it has exactly what I want on it and nothing else. So even after a year of using this system, it is still extremely fast. It's the fastest operating system I've ever used. It's, it's more stable than some of my other um, hardware that I use. It's actually more stable than my Mac, believe it or not. Um, that says a lot on how far Linux in itself has come over the last few years, but especially Arch Linux. So now I'm going to talk about a way you can get Arch Linux. If you want Arch Linux without the learning process, you just want to learn. I already mentioned Manjaro earlier. There's another type of uh, Linux distribution that's called Entergos. And basically it's Arch Linux for everyone. Uh, it's still a rolling release. Uh, it's available just like Arch Linux is in multi-languages. Um, and it includes all the packages that you need right off the bat. You don't have to install anything else uh, unless you want to. So it's going to give you some software to use. It's it's a pre-built Arch Linux system that you install yourself just as easy as Ubuntu or any other uh, basic Linux operating system. And you are able to use Arch Linux on a much quicker uh, install. So as I mentioned, when you install Arch from base, it takes anywhere from a half an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how familiar you are with, with doing so. And Tergos takes all of that away uh, and makes it a very easy install. So, if you are someone who likes to learn about computers, if you're someone who has been using Linux or started using Linux and you're finding you want to know more about how things work, Arch Linux is a great way to do that simply because you have to do everything yourself. If you mess up your system, that is your fault. If I mess up my system, it's my fault because I am the one that takes care of it. I maintain that system and I have to know how and what I'm doing at all costs in order to keep that stable. So many people find that they make mistakes on an install or and they don't understand the upgrade process or how upgrading software works and they may screw up their system by doing that. But in a way, that's giving you full control over your computer that you necessarily wouldn't have anywhere else. And that's how I actually learn how to uh, keep a stable system is I have messed up many Linux systems and I have screwed up quite a bit 
And over the time, I realized my mistakes and I've learned from it. And that's the great thing about Arch Linux. So one of the things that I'm going to tell to you, if you want to take the Arch Linux challenge and you would like some help, feel free to contact me. Um, you can comment on my YouTube channel. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel or you can um, subscribe to my podcast. It's the MRP Tech Podcast where I talk about all sorts of technologies and which ones work good for me, which ones I think might work well for you. And uh, that's it for this video and review on Arch Linux. Thanks so much for watching.